another book that Betty Debbie wanted why she wants to get it for Yeah, she says she's gonna let me yeah, she says she's she gonna pass it on it. over to yes. me to Ballinger. the, 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 right. the Ballinger. Yeah, she told uh-huh. me she wants to have that book. Uh, from the, nothing from like the, it. it's, it's a history of all things that we didn't know. From the uh, TV. Uh, yeah. From the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. Jewish man. Yes, yeah. The oh, rabbi. it's a very good book. Oh, yes. the rabbi. Yeah. Mm. So, Father, we thank you for this class tonight. We yes. thank you, Father, for your thank Holy you. Spirit. We thank you, Father, for the people that come out tonight, Lord. And, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, because we love you so much. Yes. God, we know that once we leave this earth, because we have given our hearts to you, that, Lord, we're going to be with you always, not just yes. not just on Saturday or yes. Sunday or Amen. Wednesday. Amen. But, God, we're going to be with you every day. And, yes. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you, that you allowed us that privilege to yes. come into your presence. Yes. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord God, and, yes. and God, we thank you for, for speaking to our hearts today through the study of your word, and, yes. and we thank you, Lord God, for revelation knowledge that will go yes. forth today, yes. that will cause our understanding to be enlightened, Lord God, that we will know what is the hope of your calling, and what is the exceeding greatness yes. of your power yes. to us but who believe according to the workings of your mighty power. Yes. Father, we open up our hearts today, and we say, Lord, we are hungry for more of you. We want more of you. We want our minds to be secure. We want our hearts to be to be equipped. We want our spirit to be empowered to do all that you have called us to do. That we will walk in 100% victory. Not 45%, but 100% of the time. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Father, you created us to walk in victory. So we choose to receive that now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of Thanksgiving, and we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. He gives me living water, and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Father, we worship you, and we honor you now. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, glory to God. You know, we had people uh, on last Sunday morning giving testimonies about how God has blessed them through the teaching on holiness. Yeah. Amen. God. And, I was, and, and I was and I was and I was thinking, Lord. Lord, that had such an impact upon my life. And I'm yeah. just amazed at the people, how they are talking about what it did to their life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Saturday when we was on picnic, someone testified to you. Yeah. And so that, we've been getting testimony after testimony con- concerning the message that the Lord has been giving us to yeah. minister to the people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so right now, uh, I just want to just say thank all of you. I just want to thank all of you for, you know, your faithfulness and your loyalty to the, to the house of God and your faithfulness to God and to the ministry. And because without you, we wouldn't be here. Amen. So we thank God for all of you. Regardless, you know, you know, we know that you are a human being. We know that you have to have some leisure time yourself. We know we can't expect y'all to be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But we know that when you're here, you're here. Amen. <laughs> and that's a good part about it. Yeah. Amen. So we love you all and we appreciate you. And just, just keep up the good work because God got something very special in line for you guys. Hallelujah. Amen. Because oh, no. you, you're the cream of the crop. Amen. And God sees your, he sees your heart. He sees your dedication. 
And that's why he's blessing you the way he's doing. Amen. Amen. Well, anyway, uh, we, we stopped on page number nine on last time. We're going to start back up where it says the war against Satan must be fought and won in our heart and mind. Amen. The war against Satan must be fought and won in our heart and mind. Amen. You know, that's a powerful statement, but it's so true because the, we are not fighting with an enemy that we can see Amen. with the natural. It is a spiritual enemy that we are fighting Amen. and uh, we cannot, uh, we won't be able to turn it around the other way, sister. Turn it, turn Turn the arrow around, let it face in. Oh. There you go, like that. Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, I thought you were saying air. Thank you. Okay. There you go. And so when we when we are when we are in that's why God has told us to renew Amen. our mind. Amen. Because it's the mind where the battle is raged. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. The enemy, he's after your mind, because if your mind becomes distorted, he can get you off off of, off of, off track. He can stop you from, from moving forward because you won't be able to think properly. Amen. You won't be able to understand correctly. And so God is looking at us, and he wants us to renew our mind. That's why, the, that's why I, I, this statement is, is given here. The war against Satan must be fought in, and won in our heart and mind. Amen. Amen. You see, because everything that goes into your heart goes through your mind first. Everything, music. yeah, huh? Except music. music is one of the things that doesn't. Music, it, it goes direct to the source. But most words go to your heart, go through your mind, and when your mind begins to digest, it goes to your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Huh? You said, like you said, the mind has to digest. The well, your, 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 see, your mind is where you meditate upon things. Yes. It's where you meditate upon it. Then once you have uh, uh, meditated upon it, then it goes to its destination, which is the heart. And that's why I said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Amen. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So we have to, we have to see, we, what we entertain in our mind, eventually going to start coming out of our mouth. Why? Because it went into our heart. So that's why we have to be careful what we meditate upon, what we allow our heart to think upon on, on, on a continuous base. Because if you could, if you think about, just say, for instance, you're thinking about a, a watermelon, <laughs> just something simple. And the next time you go to the store, because you, it's been on your heart so much, you've been thinking about it, you're going to see it, and all of a sudden you're going to be getting a voice it. Watermelon, that go watermelon. I believe I might want me one. Yeah, and where did it come from? It come from your meditation. It come from thinking about it. Yeah. And when you see it, now you you just want it now because it's, you've been thinking about it. It's been you've been meditating upon it, and yeah. <laughs> and you want and you want, and, and you and you thinking also. Uh, I I just know it's gonna be sweet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a red meat too, not a yellow meat. Cause some people like yellow meat, some people like red meat, but I like both. Yeah. Amen. And so you are thinking about that, and so you you looking at that, and you say. Oh my God, watermelon! So now you don't pick you up a watermelon. Now you go to the counter because you've been thinking about it. Amen. It's entering to your heart. Amen. But the Bible says one thing that's very profound. He said, "It's not what comes out of the man that defiles the man. It's not what goes in the man that defiles the man. But what comes out of the man. These are the things that defile the man. And what's he talking about? He's talking about adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, evil speaking, blasphemy, pride." All these things what comes out of the man, this is what other things that defile the man. It's not what goes in the man that defiles the man. Amen. Because what goes into the man, it goes out of the drop, which purchase all meat, according to the scripture. Amen. So it don't have opportunity to defile it. It's gonna stay long enough. <laughs> it goes in one way and out the other way. <laughs> Amen. But the thing about it is that God wants us to He wants to maintain our integrity especially in the area of our mind because it affects our heart in a very positive or negative way, in a very positive or negative way. So he said, the battlefield where Satan is raging war against the church today is in our hearts and mind, at the very center of, of our being. 
at the very center of our being. Okay? So we know that we know that we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. Amen. Excuse me. You're in what page? I am on page nine. The bottom of nine, right. Okay, Yeah. Amen. Thank you. It said the, the battle where the battle where Satan is waging war against the church today is in our heart and mind. At the very center of our being. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just like when you go to that wall of metal, what is the right? Everybody like to go to what part of the wall of metal? The heart. The heart of the wall of metal. Why? Because it's the best part of the wall of metal. Amen. Yeah. And you see, and, and, and you see where the war is raged at in a Christian life? It's in the cynical of man being. Where's that? In the heart. In the heart. Amen. And so this is why God said in Proverbs to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Flow the issues of life. Amen. So we have to be careful on what we allow ourselves to meditate upon, what we allow ourselves to continue to think upon, because it will affect us. Amen? It will affect us. Where our, where, where our entire uh, moral and mental abilities are located is, is in our heart. The heart of our, is in our, our heart. It's where our, it's where our entire moral and mental ability is located. Amen? And uh, and he is uh, and he's attacking this area. He's attacking this area. Remember when Jesus came out of the wilderness from fasting forty days and forty nights? Jesus didn't. He he wasn't attacked. He wasn't attacked in his stomach. He was attacked in his mind because he was hungry. And the devil tried to come. He tried to come against him. And said, "If you be the son of God, command this stone be made bread." Well, he don't have to wonder if he's the son of God. He know who he is. He knew who he was. So he just come right back with the word and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. In other words, he attacked him at, the, at, at, his, he attacked him at his understanding, but he came back to him with words of life instead of words of defeat. Oh, my, oh, I, oh you're right. I don't know who I am. I got, I got to figure out now. I've been fasting so long without food. I got to figure out who I am now. I'm so weak. I don't even know. No, Jesus wasn't like that. He knew who he was. He knew who he was, and he wants us to know who we are. When we are in, in, in conflict with our enemy, we always have to realize that he's coming against our, uh, our, stead, our steadfastness. He's coming against our destination. He's coming against who we are as a child of God. When you are fought against, this not you're not being fought against because you are... A, 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 a just a, a carnal Christ, a carnal person walking around in this earth, you come against because there's a, a a spirit that is in you that is different than the spirit that is the that, that is in the people that is coming against you. You see, the people are not going to come against you if you walk in the same spirit they're walking in. But when you have a different spirit, that's when they're going to come against you, because they find you a threat to them. They see you as a threat, and it's not them; it's the enemy that's in them that's causing them to to view you in this in this in this manner amen but god sees you as a victor he sees you as an overcomer regardless of what kind of attack come against you god still sees you as an overcomer amen, amen. an overcomer amen. amen and that's why that's why he is he he, he he is attacking he is attacking us in our in, a, in our most vulnerable point amen in our most vulnerable point where our thoughts originates he's attacking us in our most vulnerable point where our thoughts originates amen because jesus looking at the bread oh i bet you i could make that some some uh, that rock a piece of bread i'm so hungry i just might uh, no he didn't think he didn't let he didn't even let his mind go that far amen. he didn't even allow his mind to go that far because he walked in absolute obedience to god yes he walked in 100% obedience to God. Everything that God told him, everything that he'd known, that he saw his father do, everything that he learned of his father, he acted upon it faithfully, wittingly, and with an a, a, a open heart to hear what his father had to say to him. Hallelujah. And that's why one day we're going to be face to face with the one who called us. And we're going to, Ernest, we're going to be able to look at him and say, 
Oh, God, you made it so, you washed over us even while we was on earth, and you made it so possible that we were able to be with you throughout all eternity. Oh, Father. And and then we just bow down and begin to worship him. Oh, we worship you. Glory to God. You see, it's one thing to live for God on the earth. But it's another thing when we can live with him in eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. 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 So we, we have something to look forward to. Amen. 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 We have something to look forward to. Where there are, where we, where we receive God's word and have faith to believe his uh, promises. And where our will, emotion, desire, and all of our mental abilities are located is where? In our, it's in our soul, right? It's in our soul, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in the center core of man's being. The mind, will, and emotions. Amen? You see, if the enemy can get a hold of these areas of our life, he, he can dominate our destiny. He can dominate our destiny. See, God has a plan for us and a purpose for us, but if we allow ourselves to be deterred, you know, detoured, then we, our destiny can be altered. Our destiny can be altered. And this is what God doesn't want. See, it says, because the heart and mind are so close related, we must also look at what God's word says concerning the our mind. We must look closely at what God's word says concerning the mind. That's why he said in, in the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but yeah. thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Yeah. Then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Good. Amen. Oops. Thank you. You see, and that's all. Be, that's all. And have everything to do with our mind. Everything to do with our mind, and then it come back to uh, Romans chapter twelve and verse one. It said, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body to God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable." To God, which is our reasonable service. It said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, what? Of your mind. Then it also says, and I think First Peter said, let this mind be in you, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. And then another verse says, gird up the loin of your mind. Amen. See, there's so many scriptures pertaining to the mind that we have to understand how God, see, this is how God views the mind. He views it as a very important element of our makeup. Amen. Of our our physical makeup. And the enemy sees it as such also. That's why he attacks it so strongly. That's why he attacked it so strongly. So when when we're having a conflict, that's the enemy trying to come on you with He's trying to bring a spirit of depression upon you because a spirit of depression mobilizes your mind. It mobilizes your, it, it, it neutralizes your thinking. Did you know that? Depression neutralizes your thinking and it allows access for the enemy to come in in a stronger way. Sure it does. Yes, it does. It neutralizes your thinking. It, 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 causes you, it causes you to think less than what God created you to think. Amen. And it causes you to look down instead of looking up. Depression causes you to look down rather than to look up. And this is why the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Remember what it says in the book of Romans chapter, uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38? How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all that was what? Oppressed of the devil. Amen. Why was, he, why was, why was Jesus destroying all, all the works of the devil that would bring depression upon the people? Because he would cause the people to walk, down, walk around with a bowed down head instead of head, instead of head uh, looking, looking up. Amen. Amen. Because depression caused a person to look down. Amen. It caused a person to think, you know, to think less of himself. Amen. Amen. God never meant for us to think that way of ourselves. God always wanted us to see ourselves as he see us. You see, we belong to him. Yes. We belong to him, and he is our God, and we are his offspring, so we should always walk with our head up. We don't want to cover ourselves with fig leaves and run and hide when God wants to talk to us. We want to be able to say, Lord, here I am. Amen. 
And we don't want to come out and say, Lord, oh, where are you? Where are you, Adam? Oh, Lord, I, I'm over here. Where? I'm hiding behind the, the, the trees. Why, Adam? Why are you hiding? Because I'm naked. Yeah. You see, the enemy attacked the mind through a spirit of rebellious and disobedience. And it brought the child of God to a, a state of destruction. And he was forced, and he was ran out of the Garden of Eden where everything he had need of was provided for him. See, there's a provision for you that God has already provided for you, but you got to start thinking the way God wants you to think. Your mind got to be in right perspective with what God's word says. And your heart got to be in tune with, with what God's word says. See, both of these, all three of these got to line up. Your mind, the word, and your heart has to line up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. It make any sense to y'all. Amen. See, all these things has to line up because this is the only way God is able to communicate to us. He don't communicate. We can't reach out and touch God with our natural hands, but we can touch him with our faith. And that's something we can't see. Amen. We can't see our faith, but we know we have it. Amen. And when we release it, we know that it's going to touch the object which we're releasing it to touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So it said, because the, the heart and mind are the, are the closest related, they are, clo they are so closely related, we must also look at what God's word says concerning our mind to have a clear understanding of that battlefield. Of that battlefield. Mm -hmm. You never seen anyone, uh, in, especially in the military, you never seen anyone go to war without, without going through proper training. Yep. No. They always make sure you go through basic training, basic training. But first, before you even go through basic training, they, make, they, they, they give you a new appearance. They make sure you have a new appearance. What do they do first? They hair. cut that hair. Maybe yeah. you be looking like Ernest over there. <laughs> I, I don't have that much. Hair. My, I, I was like that too one time. <laughs> they, they made our son lose weight before he had Yeah, and some of them have to lose weight before they, they go in. Yeah, before they even go in because the, because they overweight, they won't they can't won't accept them. It's like a prenup. Right. Yeah. And so so the appearance it plays a great part mm -hmm. in your perception when you. Uh, as a as a good soldier, the way you view yourself is the, the way they view you is the way they want you to view yourself. Yeah. They want you to see yourself fit. They want you to see yourself equipped, even in even mentally. Amen. They want you to see yourself equipped even mentally. And this is what God is saying to us. He wants to be equipped mentally, physically, and spiritually. Amen. Amen. And so we have to understand that because our battlefield is is raged in the mind. The Greek word used. For the Greek word used here to refer to the mind is uh, uh, numus. 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 Nos. N O U S. Nos. Okay? So the Greek word, the Greek word referred to mind is nos, which is used to describe the mental functions and perceptions and understanding, knowing and feeling, judging. And determining the mind, the mind is com is composed is compressed. Comprised. The mind is comprised. Let me put my glasses on because I'm here pointing my finger and everything, <laughs> trying to see. <laughs> I know I got twenty twenty. I'm gonna have forty forty now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> Amen. So we now what is that? What we at now? The mind is comprised of the will. The mind. It's the last sentence of that sentence. Okay, the mind is comprised of the will, emotions, thoughts, and imagination. Amen. So that mind is great. It plays a great part in our understanding God. Amen. But the greatest understanding not, is not just happening in the mind. It happens when you meditate upon it in the mind, and it filters down to your heart, where it becomes revelation knowledge. 
You see, your mind is where it filters through. It's your filter. Just like your liver is the filter for your blood. Your mind is the filter for your spirit. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Amen. You see, you have the you you have the you have the you have the ability to allow your mind to meditate and to think on certain things, or you have the ability for your mind to not meditate upon certain things. You know, when things go to come through your mind, you have the power to cast down those thoughts. Oh, Amen. 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 You have the power to cast down those thoughts, and you have the power to retain those thoughts. Amen. Amen. You see. You see, that's why that's why the that's why the battle is raged in the mind because the mind it has a, it has a great function pertaining to the body. You see, Pastor, let's we just uh, give an example because I, we hear a lot when people say cast down the thoughts, mm -hmm. but the practically, for example, like what so, Sister Marie, if the devil is attacking you, your mind and telling you, well, here, Bill and Marie. Esmeralda, what are you going to do now? How is Esmeralda going to cast out the, down the thoughts? How because you the understand? Bible say, I don't know in English, but in Spanish say, um, they say, the, the, uh, the thought is coming, uh -huh. and we bring it to the Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I, we, I so how are you going to bring the thought to the Jesus because, Christ? Because we say it. If You're going to speak to the thought? the Bible says uh -huh. that. Uh, llevamos cautivado a la obediencia de Cristo. Mm -hmm. So we carry to the obey of Christ, the thought. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, yes. I do that. So you're going to speak to that, whatever thought you said? You're going to yeah, speak, depends, you're gonna uh, speak you know, right? If it's negative, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Yeah. If it's negative, I do that. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I do. Mm -hmm. right. Does because anyone if something in, bad okay, coming to me, I say that. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, yeah. I don't think and so, enemy. I just rebuke it right away. How do you yeah. rebuke it, Sister Sherman? When I come against it in the name of Jesus, I say, So you're going to speak it? I, no, or I you're don't speak the thought. I just, it came to me. That, like somebody said a certain thing to me. Uh -huh. Okay, and I know, like I said, this is re recent, recently, I said, the, the Lord said that he, uh, uh, that he'll, uh, I have to obey God's word, uh -huh. the word of God, Okay. When I speak to that to that person, when they're saying something to me against uh -huh. what they believe, you know, the, you know. They, okay, they and you just me. your answer is you saying yeah. that you I have to obey the word Man of God. Man must live by mm -hmm. only God's word. That's what I tell that Thank person. God, you know, that's that's what I go by. What it was word said. Yeah. So I come against that. What you're saying right now because that uh -huh. is not God's word. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you're going to speak right away right. back to Right away. Person. That's what I do. That's yeah, what I that's do with my good. family. Well, and know. I don't say, I don't get upset with them. I don't err. And I, I show love like you uh -huh. taught. Uh -huh. You show that love. But before I get so upset with them, you know, that thought come that I get, you know, I want to hit them. Oh, <laughs> so like that. Well, no, tell the we truth and shame no the devil. Yeah, that's what I used to do. But now well, I just say the word, yes. you know, what God said. Man must live by only uh, only word of by his word of God, yeah. you know the word of God. Then I read it to them, and the, sometimes they'll say, "Where is it? Where is it?" And then I find uh -huh, it for uh -huh. them. I read it to them, show yeah, it. Yeah, I remember one time you even yeah. called and you was looking for a scripture, yeah. and you yeah. spoke whoever. Right, because yeah, sometimes it doesn't come right to you, especially when they're right. up there. <laughs> get, 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 well, you know get it's upset. there, but they're yeah. asking where. Well, amen, sure amen. Yeah. Who else have an example? Uh, an example of when the enemy attacks your mind, just, you know, right. you're just doing whatever you're doing, and then a thought just come, and you know it's a lie, you know it's the enemy, you know, yeah. so you just come against it, it's just like saying you're a liar, the Lord yeah. said this, the Lord said that. Well, isn't it the same way when you... Down. Isn't it the exactly. same way when you experience this uh, illness come upon your body? That's right. Yeah. Right. That's right. Everything right. negative. Even a headache or yeah. something like that. Yeah. When you yeah. start to experience a headache, mm -hmm. so you say, this, oh, I got a headache. Oh, no. thank you. I got it. Oh, God, no. thank you for this oh, headache. No. <laughs> Is that what you say? No. Like, no. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you rebuke it? Yeah. 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 It's the, the enemy coming against your mind. Amen. So, so you're... 
you take up you take authority over that thing. Man. Sometimes I be walking in that house talking to guys like, you know, why is spirit I come against you, you lying devil? Mm-hmm. And I go back to the pits where you came oh, when, from. Oh, when you sense the enemy coming against your finances, you just you, you don't yeah. sit there and watch the enemy no. go against your finances. You said, mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus, I'm a I am blessed. God right. said I'm blessed. I'm a tither. I'm a giver. Yeah, God, you said you would rebuke said. the devour. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, that the devour rebuke. Now, Father, I just worship you. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, God, that the devour rebuke. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, God, that every need is met according to your riches and glory. I thank you, Lord, God, that I have no one because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Oh, glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the power of God right now. <laughs> and that's, that's, these are just examples on how to exercise the, 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 the word of God when the enemy starts coming against you with, with something contrary to the word of God, especially when it's concerning you. That's right. But also, Pastor, um, what do you um, recognize right now, like when we share yeah. the testimonies, how we can or how we overcome uh-huh. and how the Lord start to bring to our remembrance? Well, the same thing when sometimes the devil is attacking the mind, that is very important. For me, for example, oh, for the yeah. married person, I have a husband, he is a pastor, so I yes. can talk to him and he is a fool, yeah. you know, know the word. Yeah. But some of some you don't have, don't yeah, have that. Right. So this is why it's so important yeah. to have each other. Yes. And not right. to be ashamed sometimes to call and say, hey, um, um, you know, other. Pastor Olgo or Sister yeah. Shirley or, right. or, you know, Sister Beverly. Right. Um, sis, can we pray just, can we have a little prayer here? Yes. Can we, you yeah. know... And that is so important. Sure. You yes, know, because right. the same, not just you don't know how to do it. Right. It's a power and unity. Amen. Right. Yes, it's power right. and unity. That's right. Amen. So um, it's nothing to be ashamed. Right. Amen. Um, it is a power and unity. But you want to do that? Okay. Not the Okay, so uh, so we have to uh, we have to watch what we have we have to, we have to guard our mind because out of it flows the issues of life, amen. 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 And we got to learn how to cast down every vain imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, amen. And bring every thought into captivity into obedience to the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. And so we we see that uh, God is sh- he, so I see that God has been dealing with with hearts because of your uh, uh, your examples that you re- that you. Uh, we spoke back, but now this is what we. This is just talk. But in real life, do you really use those examples that you just shared in real life? Because see, that's sometimes where the, we forget. I forget. you forget sometimes, don't you? Yeah, yeah because sometimes when you say every time I hear, oh, okay, no, it's something like oh, by the drive by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go on, they say, oh, a drive by. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming. Oh. Amen. No, for me. It's, it's something like it's coming, and I'm just speaking, and later on I say, no, in the name of Jesus, get out from here, and I start Amen. throwing the because blood of Jesus, but now it's at the same time that attack. Yeah. Later on I say, oh, no, 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 the, no, this is bad me, no. And I, then I start to cover my family. Throw yeah, away, there you go, like there you go, there you go. Yeah. See, because our mind is saying major point of attack. Amen. Our mind is saying major point of attack. Amen. It is here that the war must be fought and won. Amen. Your mind is where Satan is re- unleashing all his all-out war against Amen. the body of Christ, Amen. against you as a child of God. Yeah. Amen. And so the war, the war we are fighting where, where, we, are, where we are wrestling uh, and struggling against Satan and evil his evil powers and principalities is not against flesh and blood. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 12, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against the rules of the darkness of this world. So we know that the battle that we are fighting against in, with our mind is not a, a physical battle. That's why our spirit must be in tune with the word of God. Because if we are not in tune, then when the battles begin to come, we will not have the, uh, the wisdom and the knowledge to cast down the things that the enemy bring against our mind. And we will go into these things headlong. And before you know it, they have brought us into captivity. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, now, and now 
because you have been, now that you come into captivity to the enemy's uh, tricks and his and his treasury, now he got you like a, a puppet on a string, and he got you he got you mummering and complaining instead of praising and worshiping. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. You see, now this is this is his this is his this is his thought. This is his this is his aim to to get you from worshiping and praising to uh, mummering and complaining. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Is, isn't that the same thing what caused the, the serpents to come in on the children of Israel in the, in, in, in the, in the wilderness? The serpents came in when they began to do what? Murmur and complain. Amen. The, the, the destroyer came in the camp when they began to murmur and complain. So, we, so, so how do we keep them out? By worship and praise. And that's why the devil fighting against our mind so strongly. Because if he can stop us from worshiping and he can stop us from praising, then there's only one thing left to do, murmur and complain. Amen. 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 And that opened up the door to the enemy. Yeah. And this is what we don't want. Yeah. See God in everything. That's right. We have to see God. We have to seek the face of God in everything. Amen. Yeah. And so uh, so we uh, now we, we, we see that now he said the war, the war, the war of the war we fight, uh, the war we are fighting were where we are wrestling and struggling against Satan and his evil power and principality is not against flesh and blood. It is not a mental battle that is fought with our mental abilities. It is not a mental battle what is fought with our mental ability. It is not won through the so-called power of what? Positive, Positive thinking. thinking. So many people think that. They think that if they can just talk positive, that everything's going to be all right. No, you can talk positive all day. That's but right. if the devil's on your trail, you better start talking the word. Amen, amen. <laughs> you better start talking the word. The word is the most positive thing that you can think, that you can speak. Amen. It overrides your positive thinking. It overrides even your negative thinking. Amen. It overrides the devil's thinking that it's coming to, that you try to put against your mind. Amen. So we have to think the God's thoughts. We have to thank God thoughts through our intellectual knowledge, through phys, uh, of psychological uh, technical technicals techniques, are uh, through our own limited natural ability. It is a spiritual battle in our mind which must be fought and won by the power of the Holy Spirit working within us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit got to be, you see, if we could, if we could uh, uh, overcome this enemy ourselves, then we wouldn't need God. Amen. We wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't need Jesus. Amen. We wouldn't need the angels to help to support us. Amen. But because we have, because we are no match for these things, f from a spiritual standpoint and a natural standpoint, that's why Jesus, he said, I will send you another comforter. That he will never leave you, nor forsake you. And he will not only be your comfort, he'll be your paraclete. He'll be your standby. He'll be your strength. He'll be your counsel. He'll be your adversary. No, not your adversary. Amen. He's everything that you need. Yes. Amen. Yes. He'll help you to overcome your adversary, yes. but he's right. not your adversary. Yes. He's, he's an advocate. Yes. That's what I mean. Right. Advocate, not adversary, but advocate. Amen. Amen. In other words, he's our lawyer. He's our lawyer. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so we, so he's all that to us, and that's why it's so important for us to understand that. Thank and uh, Amen. So now he said uh, all, of, all of the strategies that Satan has developed and is using against us today are directed toward our what? Mind. It's directed toward our mind. mind. Amen. And that's why, that's why when, you, when you sit at home, you may not even be thinking about uh, something. All of a sudden, one of you know you got in two people's in the house, maybe even three. Sometimes, some cases, sometimes more than that. But somebody's going to say something that's not going to settle too good in your heart and in your mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then you're going to come back off on them and say, "Well, who do you think you are? Where do you get that from? Why do you think something like that?" You know. Yeah. You know, and 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 all of a sudden. There's a conflict have taken place, and where did it start? It started in the mind. Amen. And it came from what someone, what a person said. See, the enemy he used words 
but you can't see the person that is speaking the words a lot of time. He impart the words to your understanding. Now, he can't put them to your spirit, but he can put them to your mind. Amen. He can't touch your spirit, but he can touch your mind. If you meditate upon those things long enough, it will drop into your spirit. Amen. So we have to guard our mind. We have to guard our mind. So all the, so all the struggles, so all the strategies that Satan has developed and is used against, the, against us today are directed toward our mind. Satan does not want Christians to have a free, clean, healthy, renewed, or victorious mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because he knows when he get a hold to it, when he come against one of those Christians that has been busy renewing their mind, he have come up against someone that will stand their ground and will not lose territory, but will gain territory because they are not ashamed of who they are, nor are they afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we walk by faith and not Amen. by sight. <laughs> And we're gonna take back territory. We're not losing nothing. We're taking more. We're taking back territory. Amen. And so the strategies is the strategy is to attack the strategy to attack and corrupt our mind to to un, to hinder you from being transformed into Christ's image. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to stop you from being conformed to Christ's image. Amen. And you know, this is one of the main things that, that God is telling us we should be like. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. In other words, let the same image you see in Christ Jesus be in you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Imitate that image that you see in him. Mm -hmm. Let your life line up with what you understand that his life is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so we, 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 we see that. But a lot, but not many of us practice allowing ourselves to come to that, to get that close to Him. Because the closer we get to Him, the more we, the more we are exposed. That's why. You know, the closer we get to Him, the more we are, the more we are exposed. What I mean by we, well, we want to be exposed. I know that, but a lot of time people don't want to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So the closer they get. When they find out they be they, they they begin to feel uncomfortable, they they, they begin to do what? They back begin to up. they begin to, they begin to back up. And it, but you, but the thing it is that God is God wants us to come closer. Yeah. Because the closer we come to Him, the more we begin to experience His presence and His glory. And the more we experience His presence and His glory, the more we will begin experiencing cleansing and purging. Amen. Because the the closer you come to God, the cleaner you're going to become. Because God's not going to allow sin in His in His in His presence. He's not going to allow sin in His presence. So how do we deal? How do He deal with it? By moving it out of you, by drawing you closer to Him. He purges you. He cleanses you. He purifies you. Amen. He take the tongue from the altar. By the, he sent the tongue. He sent the angel to, to take the. He sent the suffering to take the tongue from the altar, and he put it up on your lip, and he purged you of your iniquity. Oh, Isaiah God. chapter six. Amen. 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 That's right. So it's God's will to purge us, to cleanse us, to purify, to make us clean. Amen. It's God's will that our mind will be able to to think properly. Amen. Amen. His his strategy is to. Uh, bombard our mind with the fiery dots of unbelief, fear, worry, confusion, temptation, de depression, obsession, and deception. He will try to fill your mind with evil desires and lust of the flesh. He will try to cause you to fall, to fill your mind so full of cares of this world and of yourself that you will have no time to you have no time or room for Christ in his and his word you see he wants to occupy you every minute and that's why you know my I, I, I get pretty busy with my business and have to pass the church and all this stuff I get I get so busy that a lot of time I can't sit down and read but you know what I do 
while I'm out there working, I put my Bible on and I listen to it while I'm working, while I'm driving. I, you know, what, you know, if like tonight I got to go to work, but tonight I'm going to be listening to my Bible all night long. I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be listening to the book of Revelation. And I'm going to be listening to the book of Daniel. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Preparing my heart yes. for this teaching on mm -hmm. revelation. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be preparing my heart for this teaching on revelation. And so Amen. God, God has been dealing with my heart about this. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I've, 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 I've already got started uh, preparing my heart to, to go into this season. Because this is, this is going to be a season of change. Amen. Because, oh, she came out of Messiah. It's going to be a season of change and transformation Amen. in the hearts of God's people. Amen. I can sense uh, great things about to come for, going to come forth from yes. that from that teaching. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So, uh, and I believe we're going to be teaching that on Wednesday nights because Amen. Sunday mornings it's not a. I, I believe that needs to be reserved for Wednesday nights. Sunday mornings. Sunday morning is a, is a is a is a Sunday morning service yeah. where we have to have a, a good diet, a good food. Revel, uh, the, the, this book of Revelation and, and meat. is meat where right. those that come on Wednesday night, right. they are the ones that are coming for because of the meat. Right. On Sunday morning, people that come because it's, you know, yeah. because it's Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah, but we, but, uh, but see, if they find out what's happening on Wednesday night and they want to take part in, they can. They don't have to just come on Sunday morning, they come on Wednesday nights too. That's right. And Saturday, that's right. And Sunday, and Sunday morning, and Sunday. <clears throat> <laughs> or every every time the door is open. Right. Amen. And so we see here that uh, the devil is trying to take up all your room, all your time, and all your space, so you won't have time to think about the word, nor even read the word. And if he can, if he can get you to a place where you can't read the word, or hear the word, or read, or, or meditate upon the word, then he can. He got you headed to a backslidden state. And you don't even realize it. Because the word is designed to keep you walking in walking in in, 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 in front, not behind. Because God said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you above and not beneath. Amen. The word is designed to cause you to, to walk in divine health and healing. But if you can't get no word in you, then there you don't get you're not getting nurtured, you're not getting nurtured. You're not you're not getting your spiritual nourishment for your body. Amen. So we must read our word. We must, we must renew our mind daily with the word of God. Yeah. Amen. And so, it's, and so, yes, ma'am. I have a question. Even, uh, even when, um, even, even when you're sleeping and taking in the word, it, it's going like directly into your spirit, huh? Well, yes, you can, uh, if you, well, they said, even they said when you're in coma, if, you, if someone talking, you right. still can hear them. That's right. Amen. That's what the doctors said. Uh -huh. well, now, so doctor if you are sleeping and you and you got the Bible playing, or uh, you are uh, listening to some, uh, your spirit is still properly able to pick it up. Uh -huh. You know, you still are able to pick it up. Amen. And I don't know to what extent, uh -huh. but uh, I believe if 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 a if a person <laughs> unconscious can hear you, if a person un unconscious can still hear, uh -huh. I believe that a person sleep can still hear. Amen. May not he may not understand he may not understand it. But yeah, he, his spirit understands. Yeah. All day with the Lord praying is his spirit understands. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so we we can try many ways of, of preparing ourselves. We can prepare many ways to to uh to prepare ourselves. But we the main thing we want to do though is uh make sure that our mind is secure. Because our mind is the doorway to our heart. Our mind is the doorway to our heart. And so we have to make sure that our minds are secure and strong. And we do that by, by renewing our mind with the word of God. Because, see, before you accepted Christ, you had a mouth on you that whatever came to your mind, you said it. And it came right from your mind. You understand what I'm saying? Notice how I said whatever came to your mind, you said it. Amen. Because that's what you was put in your mind, right. the things that you were saying. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to change what you're saying, then you got to change your mindset. Right. 
mindset. And how do you gonna change your mindset? Is with the word of God. Now you're gonna be caught, you're gonna be uh, cautious on what you're allowed to come out of your mouth because you're gonna pay attention to what your mind is hearing. You see, you're gonna pay attention to what your mind is hearing. You know, for for years, there was this little old book that Charles Caps wrote. Uh, the the power yeah, of the tongue. the power of the tongue, mm -hmm. and the conf and it's full of confessions, and so for years I got I, I came to the point where I could pretty much quote everything that book says. Yeah, wow. it, it's it, you know in the middle of the book is where where it's all the confession starts at, and and from there to the end of the book it's all confessions. From the from from the beginning of the book to the middle of the book is 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 uh, showing you who you are and, and and why it's so important to confess, but from the middle of the book all on is confession and it starts out I am the body of Christ and Satan has no power over me for I will come evil with good I am of God and overcome him Satan because great is he that is in me than he that is in the world I am a, a and you just continue just let it flow you just get those scriptures you just begin to speak them over your life daily. And the next thing you know, you you understand, you, you begin to see some things. Amen. Amen. The word of wisdom is abiding in me. He teaches me all things. He shows me all, he guides me to all truth. And he shows me things to come. You see, you begin to quote these things, and all of a sudden your spirit gonna begin to gonna begin to hear these things, and it's gonna begin to take a hold of what you're saying, and it, before you know it, you're gonna be acting upon these things. Amen. And sometimes you don't have to read it. The Holy Spirit will give it to you. Right of course he will. Many times. A, a lot of times when I'm preaching. A lot of people don't speak in tongues enough. They don't. Or I had a sister that got saved, but she never hardly ever spoke and used, prayed in the spirit. A lot of times when I'm preaching. That was yeah. the word wrong with her. She never ever prayed in the spirit. Yeah, a lot of times yeah. when I'm preaching, I, yeah. I, 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 the things that I have meditated on, things that I have studied on, stood upon, I don't have to go back and read again. Right. It's, it's in my spirit. In your spirit. It and it comes out, out at the time that it's needed. When it's needed. When it's needed. At the time that it's oh, needed, that's when it comes yeah. out. Yeah. It's already in me. Yeah. That's why I keep telling you guys, we're in the last days. And this is why what we're doing here is equipping you for the end time. Amen. See, when we start talking about revelation, we're mostly dealing with the end time. Amen. Amen. We're dealing with the end time. And, it's, and, and you need to understand that if God is bringing, if God is, is, is equipping you for the end time, then you ought to be wanting to receive all that God has for you. Oh, yes. oh, Amen. Yes. You need to come with a great expectation oh, and with a, a put a demand on the gifting and the calling that God has placed within me. Oh, Amen. Amen. See, that's a gift of a teacher in me. Oh, Amen. Amen. That's a gift of the preacher in me. Oh, yes. Amen. And you put a demand on those gifts. And you're gonna you're gonna receive by the spirit, not by the, not by what I think. You're gonna receive by the spirit. Amen. 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 And so we are here now. Glory to God. His strategies to bombard your mind. His his strategies. Second from the bottom. Second paragraph from the bottom. Yeah. His strategies is to bombard your, your mind you with oh, yeah. your with 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 the fiery dots of unbelief. Fear, worry, confusion, temptation, dis depression, obsession, oppression. oppression, depression, oppression, and deception. He will try to fill your mind with evil thoughts, evil desires, lust of the flesh. He will try to cause you to fall, to fill your mind so full of the cares of this world and of your and of yourself. That you'll not that you will have no time or room for Christ and His Word, Amen. So, so this is what we have to guard against: occupying all of our time that we won't have no time for for Christ and His Word. In His counterattack on the church, Satan and his evil forces are going to come against your mind with evil force intensity. come against your Satan, Satan and his evil forces are going to come against your mind with full okay, in, intensity 
using the seven major strategies that God has shown us, shown me, Satan is going to do everything in his power to fill your mind with anxiety, fear, defeat, and discouragement, concerns, and circumstances in your life until your mind is so weakened that you become depressed, frustrated, and filled with so filled with a sense of helplessness and despair, hopelessness and despair. He's going to try to oppress you, weigh, weigh you, uh, weigh your, wear your mind with the, wear your mind down with such, with such heavy burden, and and precious, precious like what precious? Precious from the cares of this life coming down upon you like. You begin to have you. You begin to look at your children. And you begin to think, "Oh God, I gotta do something about my children." And that's pressure coming against your heart, coming against your mind, because you're trying to figure out what can you do. How can I? How can I work this thing? How can I make it right? Pressure. He could be putting pressures on you from every area. Amen. And torment. Torment your mind and body until you are unable to break through the, the thick cloud of depression and oppression hanging over you. Because that's the principalities that's hanging. That's the, that's the spiritual weakness in high places that is hanging over you. See, we are in this world. We're not of the world because we are spiritual beings. The enemy, he doesn't fight us with natural force. He fights us with spiritual forces. And he uses the principalities and the powers that hangs over the region to come against you with their, with their, demon, with their demon spirits that, that they command. So we have to be equipped spiritually, physically, mentally, so when these attacks come, that we will not be overcome with evil, but we will overcome evil with good. Because it comes against our mind, and def if it comes against our mind with evil, that means there are evil thoughts, there are evil gestures, there are evil, 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 everything is evil. So we have to, we have to see that, the, that these thoughts are not coming from God. And when we see that they're not coming from God, then we can counteract against these thoughts, with the word. Amen. Satan, this word is not coming from God. God, because God doesn't talk like that. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast these thoughts down and I bring my mind in subjection to the Holy Spirit. And I bring every thought into the obedience to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And to the will of God. Amen. I'll not yield to your thoughts. I'll only, I'll not, I'll not, I'll not follow the stranger. I'll only hear the, the, the shepherd voice. I, the stranger voice, I will not hear. Amen. Amen. You got to start taking control over your thoughts. Say, for instance, you, you have a, uh, someone that, that, that was in your life, and now they're somewhere in the back of your life, somewhere in your past, and all of a sudden, the enemy start using them to rise up against you, and, uh, and because, you, because you, you know them, you might go along with them for a few minutes, but you don't understand what you are doing. You open yourself up to a familiar spirit. And so if you open yourself to a familiar spirit, then that devil, he's going to use that person from your past to bring you into bondage. And you know, most people that's in your past, they, they, they good with, they good and crafty with words. They know how to take words to, and, and to twist them to make you feel like you the one who did something. You ever seen anybody like that? <laughs> so you got to be, you got to be wise as a serpent. And harmless as a dog. And how can you be like that if your mind is not being properly uh, 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 redirected by the word of God? You understand what I'm saying? I've seen people like that. And I've been around people like that. You know, and, and sometimes you just meet people. They just, they just so 
good with words that they can take a lie and make it sound so sweet. But you know, when you get and make your little heart skip a beat. You remember that, Ernest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get upset with you because you're not listening to them, then they get right away from you. I see people like that, and they just took off. I said, oh, thank God. Well, he goes, draw yeah. Yeah. You uh, quick take it. Which you got to be, you got to be, you, you have to be, you yeah. have to be wise. Yeah. And so the wisdom and knowledge, it, it begins in, with the transformation of your mind. mind. And then it filters to your heart to help you to apply it to your life. Right. Amen. Right. You, 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 to, to have a, a transformed mind, that means you, you, have, you have been paying, a, you have, been, you have a, applied yourself to the word. And you have understood what the word has said. And now that you've understood the word is said, now you're able to apply it to your life. Because you understand the the the